Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Dumb and Dumber 2. In the last, I'd say, five years or so, there's been a lot of films cashing in on 90s nostalgia, trying to recapture the magic from a past 90s franchise or 90s star or studio or director or what have you. If you look at things like Tangled, Scream 4, or even recently John Wick, are all movies who are trying to cash in on our love of things from the 90s. And Dumb and Dumber 2 is no different. I'm not exactly sure why everyone has such a boner for the 90s just like my parents generation my generation and generation x has a very predictable and preordained need for nostalgia which is probably more about our fear of our own mortality and through time most of what used to be important to culture gets forgotten but it's also maybe just because people like the 90s dumb and dumber 2 definitely falls in line with all of those the kind of film that dumb and dumber 2 is isn't really around anymore we don't really make comedies like that now now they're all kind of Apatowian, I guess you could call them. Dumb and Dumber 2 is really more of what used to be a big comedy in the 90s. Now, 20 years ago when Dumb and Dumber came out, that was a major year for Jim Carrey. He had three major hits, each making more than the one before, the first one being Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, then The Mask, and then finally Dumb and Dumber. And all were monstrous hits and launched him to being one of the biggest movie stars of the 1990s. It also helped launch the Fairley Brothers, who would go on to success with their Something About Mary, and they would become the defining comedy directors for a couple of years and had their own era, not as long lasting as Judd Apatow really, similar in just that broad influence of all Hollywood comedy. And you know, it helped Jeff Daniels a little too. Dumb and Dumber 2 actually kind of succeeds in coming back to that a lot better than most of those 90s nostalgia films really do. It brings you back to what you liked about the Fairleys and Jim Carrey and successfully reminds me of a period of comedy that if you did like, you'll enjoy this film, but if you didn't, it's just the same horrible films you saw before. Lloyd Christmas played by Jim Carrey, who has been in a mental institution for the past 20 20 years, which apparently as Harry, played by Jeff Daniels, comes to visit him and says he's had enough and he's gonna have to get one of his kidneys removed and replaced because he has a bad kidney. And so then Lloyd Christmas comes back and says it was all a prank this whole time. They go off and try to find Harry's long lost daughter who he recently found out he had with Frida Felcher who's played by Kathleen Turner after she has tried to contact the daughter who was given up for adoption. So Harry and Lloyd go off to try to find this girl so he can reconnect with her and also kind of get his kidney and go on a similar road trip to the first Dumb and Dumber film. With the Fairley Brothers and this style of comedy, it was really considered kind of lowbrow when it came out. It wasn't like critically lauded or anything. Most of the acclaim for the comedic performances Jim Carrey would do would really come later, even for something like Liar Liar. And also the Fairley Brothers who really introduced the kind of gross out comedy that just infused everything for a while. Living in that time, especially with Jim Carrey and the Fairley Brothers, I liked both of them at certain points and got completely fucking sick of them at other points. This film is such a representation of both of those. It reminds me of a Jim Carrey film. It definitely feels like a Dumb and Dumber sequel. It reminds me of what the Fairley Brothers represented. But one of the things I think Dumb and Dumber 2 is really missing that the first Dumb and Dumber had really well was a kind of sweetness to these dullard characters that Harry and Lloyd are, which actually recently I learned they're called Harry and Lloyd as a reference to Harold Lloyd, which is something I should have gotten years ago. Also, I think that might be a prank. There's kind of a sweetness to them, and if you look at at least the early Fairly Brothers film. I haven't seen too much past the first three after you get to Shallow Hell and stuff. It was a little dicey. And I didn't even make it that like hall pass and shit like that. There was always a sweetness to those films. You'd feel bad for like the Ben Stiller character and there's something about Mary, but you could still laugh at him and it kind of invited you in more. That's still kind of there in this film, but it's a lot more mean-spirited than the first film. One of my major complaints with this movie is how much more mean-spirited it is. Mean-spirited comedy to some people is really funny. I mean, look at a lot of Family Guy and Seth MacFarlane. It really didn't work with these characters. That was kind of one of my fears about them making a Dumb and Dumber 2 was they would modernize it, which they really don't. It does not feel like a modern comedy at all, which is definitely a plus to it. But it does feel a little outdated in some of its jokes and what it's trying to do. When Harry goes to his parents' house and he's obviously adopted because they're very Asian, they make a lot of really bad Asian stereotype jokes, which I was kind of shocked that nobody seemed to really mind. Same with their portrayal of women in this film, which in the first one didn't bother me because I was like, oh, well that was 
the 90s. We were less progressive back in 1994. It was a different time. And then when I see it in a 2014 film, it kind of makes me go, that's weird. But then I kind of think it doesn't feel as kind of genuine and something I can just let go as much as in the 94 film. It feels kind of outdated. But then this film feels outdated. So part of me thinks is that they're throwing it back to the point where they're like, oh, well, these are the kind of jokes we would do in the 90s. And that way it does feel like one of those comedies because you could do all these like super offensive things. And the mean spiritedness to it doesn't really help. Jim Carrey's character feels a little more crazier and schemy. He doesn't feel as fun as he did in the first film. The thing with these long awaited comedy sequels, I went through this like a year ago, or I guess 11 months ago, with Anchorman 2. And I actually think this is a better movie than Anchorman 2. With Dumb and Dumber 2, I I think what makes this fresher is that we don't have these kind of comedies anymore. The thing I think that made the Fairly Brothers different was they kind of understood screwball comedy and older comedy. So even though they're doing things that were like gross out comedy and very of the time, they were kind of like dumber lowbrow jokes. The plots to both the Dumb and Dumber films are just happen to be there to motivate the plot. They don't really affect it too much. It's not really about those things. It's really about Harry and Lloyd doing dumb shit. I like comedies with a looser plot so they can just do all these like funny gags throughout it. I think that really works well. Jim Carrey was just as good as he used to be in all those Jim Carrey vehicles and that actually took me back because one of the first movies I saw by myself in the movie theaters was Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. He feels right at home with that. It's a good return to form. He is a really talented comedic actor. It's the kind of portrayals that Jim Carrey will always be known for but it shows why he's so good at that. Jeff Daniels who doesn't really really do this kind of performance. I guess this is showing his versatility. And he actually started the first day of shooting on Dumb and Dumber 2, the day after he won the Emmy for Best Actor for The Newsroom. And this is nothing like his character for The Newsroom, but it's interesting how well he could go back to it. I was a little more worried about him because he doesn't really do like comedy roles like Dumb and Dumber as often as like Jim Carrey does. But Jeff Daniels is so good at playing off Jim Carrey and I think they work very well together. The chemistry is just as good as it used to be. I think there's no denying that. And I like seeing Kathleen Turner again. They are a little too mean to her but I think she was up to the challenge of this film as well as Rob Riggle who is a little too straight. I think Rob Riggle felt too conventional because too many comedies nowadays just stuff all these comedic actors in there. That was the only thing that felt a little too modern or something. I don't know if that was a requirement. I like Rob Riggle normally. I'll watch him in anything, but it was, just didn't feel right. When I went into Anchorman 2, I was like, you know what? I want to have a good time. I want to laugh. And that that's really my requirements. And when I saw the first Dumb and Dumber and when I saw the first Anchorman, that's, that's honestly what I thought then too. I don't think either of those films were made to live up to the original. So saying, yeah, this isn't as good as Dumb and Dumber is is like one of the dumbest things you could actually say. But it's not like a Caddyshack 2 disaster. What I think it does is it has a good time. Not as good as the old Jim Carrey movies when I was a kid, but it recaptures that magic very, very well. And I think one of the things that works better for it than a lot of the 90s stuff is most of them you go, oh, that's why that certain style director studio thing ended and why we came up with something new. And it reminds you why that style eventually became out of vogue. Or it reminds you of why it was so great. And Dumb and Dumber 2 reminds me of why the Fairley brothers were so great at one time and why Jim Carrey was such a big star and why I thought Jeff Daniels was so good and even underrated in the first Dumb and Dumber at the time. And I had a good time and I laughed. That's all I really wanted from this movie. It's kind of a nice break from the normal studio kind of Apatow comedy showing me what a normal studio 90s comedy used to be. Dumb and Dumber 2 gives me exactly what I really expected from it and what you would want from it. It gave me kind of a fun, silly, lowbrow comedy and I left laughing and having a decent enough time and maybe if I catch it on TV I go, I don't know, that was okay and that's all I really wanted from it. And it gave that to me and I can leave and probably not think about it again until, you know, they make the 41 year old virgin or something like that. And then I can compare that to this and the cycle continues endlessly. So if you have seen Dumb and Dumber 2 and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.